Hi there, I'm Milad. Welcome to the first lecture of the course Nanotechnology, Introduction, Essentials and Opportunities. In this lecture, I want to talk about the definition of nanotechnology. What is nanotechnology? How is it working? And what's the importance of nanotechnology that makes it the topic of cutting edge research and technologies? I try to propose a definition. I'll talk a little bit about different aspects of nano world. Let's get us started. Let's start this course by asking this question. What is the difference between us and other species on the planet? More specifically, how we could transfer our lives from caves to civilization of 21st century? Well, as a matter of the fact, we as the human being, we are so passionate to discover how the world around us is working, and we always try to understand the physics of this world and then implement our understanding to make tools. Tools play a significant role in our lives. Like back in the history, the Iron Age, when people realized how to form iron to make hunting and farming tools. It took the human civilization to the next level. And we human, we never stop exploring working mechanisms of world around us. Using our understanding to manipulate the materials and make tools and equipment which make our lives more convenient and intelligent, right? Right now, at the beginning of 21st century, we are making equipments that enable us to control the matter at the atomic scales. We are finding the ways to control materials, particles, and features at the very, very tiny scale, smaller than centimeter, millimeter, or even micrometer. In a broad range of technologies, we are dealing with systems of nanometers dimensions. And once it happens, once we manipulate the matter at the nanoscale and control it, super exciting properties are concluded at the bulk level. Once we work at the atomic or let's say nanoscale, we are changing how we work with the materials and importantly, how we control the materials. And this is huge. This can even change the way we think about materials and system at the bulk level. There are exciting potentials to be understood by working with atoms and molecules. For example, consider graphite and diamond. Graphite is black, soft conductor of electricity, but diamond is transparent, very hard and electrically insulator. So what's going on between these two, graphite and diamond? Well, surprisingly, as some of you may know, both these items are made of carbon atoms. However, they contain totally different characteristics. So why is that? Well, the answer lies on the fact that how the carbon atoms are connected together. As you see here in this picture, in graphite, carbon atoms are next together in honeycomb sheets, which sheets are joined together with Van der Waals bonding. While in diamond, every single atom is in connection with four neighbor atoms through the strong covalent bonding. Virtually, if we have some tools to rearrange carbon atoms, then we can convert graphite to diamond. Very exciting, huh? It may not be feasible right now, but working at the nanoscale can lead to such mind-blowing consequences. Let's look at the electronic industry, for example. First transistor was invented in 1947, and that single transistor was almost at the same size of your smartphone. But over time, fabrication technology has such improved that nowadays billions of transistors are all integrated in the CPU of your laptop and the smartphones. Even 22 nanometer IB bridge processor has been introduced and practically implemented by Intel in 2011. As a result, we have much more powerful and faster electronic devices. Nowadays, cutting edge technologies are focusing in design of nanoscale components, such as carbon nanotube based sensors or single electron transistors. Such devices could result in extraordinary features and performance. The final nano based product in any industry can be totally game changing then in terms of the capabilities and the features. Looking at the nanomedicine, just imagine that we are able to make nano robots which are able to deliver drugs to damaged cell or destroy cancer cells. That's totally different way of disease treatment so far. Another example of nanotechnology is the quantum dot. Gold can behave quite differently at the nano scale compared to the bulk level. If you solve different size of gold particles, the color that emits from the liquid can change very from very bluish to reddish. Depending on the size, from like 2 nanometers to 10 nanometers, quantum dust emits different color light due to the modified quantum confinement. I think you've got the sense about nanotechnology, but we need to be exact and make a statement and definition about nanotechnology. 
Well, when it comes to the definition of nanotechnology, there are different perspectives and uh, visions. Depending who you are asking to define nanotechnology and what are their profession, you may get different points of view, actually. But there are some common factors about nanotechnology that we can take into account. If you look at the literature, there is no universal and unique definition for nanotechnology. But we can put it this way. If we are able to manipulate, control, and integrate materials or let's say features at the nanoscale, lengths between 1 nanometer to 100 nanometers, then we can form novel structures, devices, and systems at the macroscopic level. In other words, nanotechnology is based on the manipulation, control, and integration of materials at the nanoscale, 1 nanometer to 100 nanometers, to form novel structures, devices, and systems at the macroscopic level. Well, there are two important points here that we need to pay attention. First, nanoscale is defined the length between 1 nanometer to 100 nanometers. Second, nanotechnology is not restricted to any specific material or science. Let me expand these points one by one. As the world nano says, nanotechnology is about the size. The world nano means 1 to the power of minus 9, and besides the unit of meter, 1 nanometer means 1 billionth of a meter. And now I just refer to the dimension of 1 nanometer to 100 nanometers. This ratio is approximation. What mainly matters is a special behavior of particles and materials that appears below 100 nanometers. In the next section, I'll talk about what makes this length of material so interesting and why we can make huge difference if we work below around like 100 nanometers. For now, I want you to have in mind that the size does matter in nanotechnology and it's more and less about all the size between 1 to 100 nanometers. There is another point in this definition. There is no sign of any specific material or any particular field of science. Indeed, nanotechnology is a very broad term that involves any material or research topic. In fact, we have nanoelectronics, nanophysics, nanochemistry, nanobiology, nanoengineering, and even nanomachines and nanorobots. Sometimes findings of nanotechnology are results of collaboration between people with different backgrounds. Thereby, nanotechnology can be seen as an interdisciplinary field of research. Okay, let me sum up this lecture. Our understanding about materials and the advancements of technologies in equipments and tools have reached the point in many areas of science that we can manipulate and control materials at a very, very tiny scale. Surprisingly, behavior of material change at the nanoscale, and if we work at the nanoscale, we can come up with novel structure systems and treatments at the bark level. This is the end of lecture number one. After some lectures, I introduce you some external resources, such as video links or uh, resources for extra study. I'd like to ask you to engage yourself with the course. There is not much benefit in being passive listener, honestly. Try to engage yourself, make comments and answer the quizzes, ask your question in the Facebook community, and help your fellow students to solve their problems if you can. Try to be an active enthusiasm learner, and I'm here to help you. As a question for thinking, why do you think behavior of materials change at the nanoscale? How this could result in extraordinary features at the bark level and make nanotechnology special? You may come up with some ideas or do some research around it, but uh, I'll answer this question in the next section. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.